Yeah. With the, those aims require a, a structure, some sort of, some sort of, uh, you know, because as you pointed out, the people you are trying to reach are the people who tend to have either given up on existing structures, they don't vote, they're not in a role, et cetera, et cetera. How can you see MANA building the party network or the party structure to actually reach out to re-engage these people? Actually, the, the party structure isn't that, that big a deal to us. Yeah. Um, getting the movement rolling again, the way the movement used to be in the old days, mm. uh, when it didn't have a, a particular name and when it was a very loose affiliation of all sorts of groups. We want MANA to be a movement. Mm. <clears throat> a movement on the streets, a movement for the defence of Māori lands, a movement for the defence of housing projects, like in Pumare down in Wellington, like in GI, like in other areas where this likely next government is going to continue to run down the housing stock. You know, we want this movement to be opposing uh, big companies just shutting down and, and, and getting rid of workers, that kind of stuff. We want the movement to, to start rebuilding itself anyway. So I'm not only worried about um, the whole thing about the party structure right now. Sure. It's about mana being credible as a movement for the defence of the rights of those who have no rights uh, to be the voice of those who have no voice in Parliament. Mm. And so you are committed to staying all of next term? You'll stay in Parliament for the next three? Um, unless I get... <laughs> by John Minto and Sue Bradford and Annette, it's time to move on. They want somebody else in there. It looks like that's me. Very good. Well, we congratulate you on what appears to be a hold of Te Tautokarao. Um, as you say, it's not in the bag yet, but it's looking more and more like that. And, uh, you know, best of luck for the next three years, and, you know, we'll watch with interest what happens with Mana there on. Thank you very much, Bryce. Right. Okay, cheers. Kia ora, kia ora. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So, so he's held the fortress is Pretty the main much. thing, and mm. he'll be happy with that. But he does sound a bit downbeat about what's looking like less than one percent of the vote for Mana. It's it's, um, an, it's an underscore. Where, I mean, it's less than they were polling. Yeah. You know, and their their better polls yeah. had them up with enough. You know, frankly, for all he is speaking as being a, uh, you know, lone voice. Being a lone yeah. voice does get hard. And yeah. frankly, I think he with Annette Sykes beside him, yeah. that would have been. You know, that would have been a team. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to bring in, at this point, um, uh, uh, Victor Billow. Victor Billow was a uh, candidate in the Dunedin North electorate for the uh, Alliance Party. Uh, he's also the um, PR guy. Is that the correct? What, what's your actual title? Uh, for the... Like, maritime. Oh, for the... Uh, maritime. Well, I, I work for the Maritime Union, the Communications. Communications, there we are. Uh, so, Victor, you've been on the left for a long time. Yes. And... You've seen a lot of leftist movements come and go. You stayed with the Alliance Party and you've run for the Alliance Party again. Why didn't the Alliance fold in with Mana? What's your whole... You know, he was saying all the things you want to hear. Get rid of child poverty, join the movement, make yeah. the movement big. Well, uh, it wasn't that interview. Um, sure. There's been other interviews where he said things that we don't want to hear. Right. And, that like um, what? Well, I think really, uh, you know, the... I think this feeds into really the result we've seen tonight. Mm. Um, uh, he's got a very strong, uh, been a very strong advocate for um, a Maori um, uh, kind of interests and a quite a radical voice. Yep. And the idea with Mana seems to have been to broaden that out to a. Um, sorry, I've got to, got to sorry, yep, this. Sure. yep. Hello, uh, you're back on vote chat. Uh, it's Tim, is it? Tim Watkin? Hello? Hello, sorry, who have we got? Jacinda, Jacinda. Oh, Arthur. Jacinda. Hello. How are you? I'm not bad. How are you? Oh, very good. Sorry, Jacinda. We 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 have we're doing things on a shoestring here, and we have very bad communication between our backroom people and the talent. Don't the... you worry. Don't you worry at all. What do you want me to do? Stay on the line, or? Oh no, no, no. You're alive. You're live. We're web streaming as as we do oh, right now. Brilliant. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Oh, hello. I should have told you right at the start. So no, uh, it's, it's Andrew Geddes down here. I've got Bryce Edwards sitting right next to me. Say hello, Bryce. Like a good yeah. boy. Oh, hi, Jacinda. And, and hello. Um, both of you. It's a very yeah. exciting night in Auckland Central. That's oh. very close by the looks of things. Um, it's been jumping around a little bit. That's definitely true. <laughs> we, can, we can see that currently Nikki Kay is just a wee bit ahead, but that's nothing at this stage, so it could go either way. Yeah, I mean, it's a, a number of special votes that's really interesting, um, but a majority I see at the moment of about 733 and 
Uh, last time it was 1500, so you know we've managed to push against a swing, which is which is great. So do you think we won't know tonight uh, the outcome? I really, you know, I don't know. We're at 88 percent um, of the vote count now. Um, we're going to wait till the end and, and make a bit of a make a bit of a call then. All right. So looking outside of Auckland Central, your take on the evening? What high points, low points? What do you reckon? Sorry, outside of Auckland Central? Yep, going, going nationally, what we're seeing across the country. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the mood to me always felt like we would have got that Labour vote a bit higher. And what I think will be really interesting in the in the later periods of the, of the I guess, of the debrief of the campaign is that a bit of a conversation of how many Labour voters thought that we wouldn't get there and therefore switch their vote to Green, but as a temporary measure. Because that was a bit of a sense that I got, that it wasn't a, a necessarily a permanent move, but they were just thinking about what they thought would happen if the Greens then were in a coalition of some description with National. So that'll lead to some interesting discussions about what's happened there with those voters' decision making. Mm. And where did New Zealand first come from? How did that happen? Oh, you know what? I, I like to blame a lot on John Banks, <laughs> and I'm putting that one squarely on them. Um, I mean, he, didn't, he just didn't have the profile into those final phases of the campaign. Uh, and I really think the tea tapes gave a bit of it to him. Um, and of course, uh, mm. putting him on a platform on the uh, on the minority parties debate probably helped him as well. But you know, I, I've always, when it comes to him, I've never said never. Um, mm. He's like a zombie. Yeah, well, this is the thing. You've ha you have to stake him down, right? But <laughs> the, it's it will make for an interesting. I mean, if if these uh, votes that we're seeing hold up, and you know, they're, they're still tinkering around the edges. I mean, National, they're on the edge of a overall majority, just under. ACT, it looks like, are going to come through. United Future looks like they're going to come through. Mm -hmm. So putting those together, it looks like they're going to be able to get over the line, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 And those, those obviously were their natural partners. And, and obviously that was what John Key was trying to engineer against them, and it looks sure. like it's come to fruition. Yep. Um, you know, but uh, the voters of Epsom made their call on that one. And, sure. Um, you know, we'll see down the track whether or not they have any regrets over it. I have to admit, I'm a bit surprised by it. I didn't think John Banks would hang in there. Well, I mean, you're right, the polls were... But then again, there was such a big undecided and maybe some people went in and just held their noses. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. absolutely. So, you'll, you'll go back down to Wellington. Looks like there's going to be a few less of you in the caucus room. What do you mm -hmm. think the discussion's going to be like next week? What are you going to be talking about? Oh, you know what, I, I really haven't thought a minute beyond uh, this day, you know, um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a really devastating thing to see any of your colleagues go because mm. your colleagues become your friends um, and it's uh, such an abrupt thing, but that's the nature of politics. Sure. It always takes a while to come to terms with, if I'm really honest. Um, yeah. And I haven't really, I think, probably turned my mind to that, I guess because yeah. we, you become so uh, electric-focused in your own, on your own race. But, mm. um, you know, uh, there are a lot of people that I'm still holding out hope for, but I'm glad to see that we've hold up, held on to some of those seats with National certainly poured a lot of money into. Sure. Well, look, best of luck for the rest of the evening. It's going to, like you say, it's going to come down to the wire and then beyond. Yeah. So you go off, you enjoy your time with your supporters. Oh, and Thank you. And thank great volunteers and they've, yeah. they've got us here. And thank you very much for ringing in. We've uh, very Thanks much enjoyed lot. talking. Right. Take right. care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Jacinda. Okay, well, that's very interesting. Um, of Unexpected. course, expected. We did not know that was coming. No, no, no. <laughs> um, now, some of these people keep talking about 88% of polling done. Of course, it's 88% of the polling booths counted. Yes, that's right. And they can be quite different booths. Quite. Which absolutely. I think is a really important point. Yeah. So um, things can still change. So, so one polling booth in deepest, darkest Southland with eight votes. Yeah. One polling booth in Mungary with 800 votes. That's right. That's the difference. Anyhow, um, we were talking to Hone Harawe before, talking about the Mana Party. Um, it's the new left-wing project, exactly. um, with some people not so sure about it. Here's one. We're <laughs> talking to the um, studio Sorry. today. This is um, Welcome to the studio, Victor Below, um, Alliance candidate um, for Dunedin North and yes. long-time left-wing activist, um, veteran activist, really. Um, you've been standing for Parliament for a long time and um, looking... I know you have some strong views and um, interesting analysis about the state of the left, so, yeah, what do you make of um, Hone Harawe and, and Mana tonight? Well, looking at the numbers, I mean, just getting back to what we were saying, I think the um, issue is, is that he has really um, gone in there, I think, as a left-wing version of the Maori Party. Mm -hmm. If you look at the numbers around the country, what I've mm. seen 
and which proves a little theory of mine, um, is that he picked up a lot of personal votes in mm -hmm. his electorate, uh, Te Tai Taikara, and obviously has a, a lot of uh, respect there in mana. Um, around the rest of the place, we see a lot of mana votes coming in um, for the like Annette Sykes, uh, mm. obviously uh, one of the leading candidates um, mm. in a Māori seat. Um, but what we didn't see was the mana vote as a party vote. Mm. It was on the lower end of what people were saying, just below sure. 1%. Yeah. And what we also saw was some of the lead candidates like John Minto and Sue Bradford, enormous personalities, profiles, mm. left-wingers, mm. absolutely disastrous results in the electorates they ran in. I mean, right. they were, I mean, you know, if I could make a, a comparison, I mean, they were getting about as many votes as I did. <laughs> you know, and I mean, that wasn't a, you that know, many? I mean, you know, and they're coming from a slightly higher, yeah. um, you know, um, profile. So, I mean, that's an interesting thing. So that is going to cause a little bit of thought around that. It, is Mana a party that can be a left-wing party with a leader like Hona Hauera, who... I don't believe um, a lot of um, non Maori voters would support. And I, well, I, I there's been a they're... bit of confusion, yeah. really, about what the party stands for, and I, th I think that's why they haven't done as well as they could have, because a lot of voters throughout the country just don't really know what mana is. Is it a Maori nationalist party? Is it a, um, a party of the poor and dispossessed, as he was saying on the phone before? I'm not sure there's any clarity, and people don't vote for parties where, unless they kind of have an idea of what it means. Well, that, yeah, I mean, the other thing is, too, you're probably right. I think there's a bit of a split there about what they're about. Mm. Um, but it seems to me that they have got a mandate from some people, um, but it's not the poor and dispossessed. It's the voters of Titai Tokara who have gone for yeah. uh, Hone. And um, for, you know, well, whatever reason, they see how he's their representative. Mm. But the, the future of mana, I believe, as a new left party, I don't think they've established that tonight. Um, I mean, certainly the Alliance hasn't established it either. Mm. Um, but... Um, <laughs> I mean, I think it's been a uh, expected but very poor result for the left tonight. I mean, the only th other thing I can think of is if we look at some of the other things that are moving around, the Labour Party vote, were, the, the Labour Party were getting more votes than um, Mana and the Māori Party in some of those seats, including, I believe, um, Te Tai It's yeah. interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also in Heartland Labour seats, like you were saying before, Wigram and Dunedin South. Well, just, just on that, we've got a yeah. final for Dunedin South the party vote 11,400 for Labour, 13,200 for National. So, you know, 18,000 more National Party votes cast in Dunedin South than we cast Dunedin for Labour. 1,800, yeah. Is, I mean, it, it is the most, and I don't think I'd be, uh, you know, this is my take on it, but I'd say the history would back me up. It is the most Labour seat in the country. It always has been. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's got still got a Labour MP with the electorate yeah, yeah, sure, vote. Yeah. But with the, the local issues, we had the hillside issue. Yeah, yeah. No, so right. how do you explain this then? I believe uh, it's a collapse of the Labour vote um, because, um, and my analysis is because uh, the working class, um, organised working class, has been so badly damaged, and, and in my view Labour's done such a bad job of leading them and articulating what should be Labour policies, that we're, um, they've seen their core core vote collapse and Dunedin South very serious for them mm. and you know it doesn't bring me any <laughs> great uh, pleasure to see that because I believe mm. those people are not going to be served by a national government. Mm. Interesting. So can can the left take any heart out of tonight's um, results? Is there any? Uh, no because I believe that it's, a, it's just a you know there's no point in trying to paint it up it's a, like a disastrous vote for the Labour Party. Mm. Um, the Greens have done well but I believe that is a result of their trajectory to the right. Yeah. Uh, becoming more moderate, saying they may work with National, which I find very worrying. Uh, MANA has not done very well. Uh, the Alliance has, has, has just an uh, insignificant vote. Um, so uh, the only thing I guess I can say is that there's going to be a lot of uh, pressure coming on the government with the world economic crisis in the next three years, and that might have a bit of a blowback effect on them. Sure. So always look to the future, huh? <laughs> You've got to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Oh, thanks for coming in, Victor. Yeah. Victor, really do appreciate your, your commentary Thank you. on this. And, um, you know, commiserations on Dunedin North, but <laughs> at least you'll be able to spend more time with your family. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Very good. Well, I'm, I'm hoping we've got Tim Watkin. Uh... Tim Watkin should be returning to us um, on the phone at any moment, so we can have a chat to him now that things are firming up. Let's just pop up the national results so we just see where we're at so uh, we can... Okay. Um, um, so, yeah, now, National's course, coming back slowly, Labour's going up slowly, 60s, so National's just short of a majority on an overhang situation, Yeah, two seats short of a majority, but they've got Act and United Future in there to give them a majority with 
undoubtedly the Maori Party there to give them the extra bump they need. Yes. So, uh, Tim, Tim Watkin, I assume. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So just for our viewing audience, we're joined once again by Tim Watkin of the Prundit.co.nz blog and uh, commentator on all things full stop. OK. <laughs> give, give, give us your summary. Thank you very much. Give us your summary, Tim, of the night. Oh, look, what are we looking at? Um, I've, I've, I've just been talking to some guys here at TVNZ. Um, I'm hanging out um, behind that big... I don't know if you're watching um, any of the TVNZ coverage, but there's a big screen at the back of our studio. I'm hanging out behind there talking to a lot of people who know this stuff a lot better than I do. Yep. Um, uh, look, the... Uh, obviously, we talked earlier in the night about whether the Maori Party would um, be influential. looks yep. like they won't haven't. They're, they're just not quite there. Right. Um, Te Tautonga seems to be the seat that Labour probably won, which it didn't actually want to win, as it yeah, turned out. Yeah, that's true. That's yes. right. Yeah. Yep. Um, they probably would have preferred to lose it um, and, and have, um, have National more dependent on yeah. the... Uh, yeah, have National more dependent on the Maori Party and uh, have to negotiate more and, and compromise more and, yeah. and uh, potentially uh, annoy its base more. Mm. Um, so that will be um, significant. I, I think we've got National on 60 at the moment. The suggestion is, well, 96, they might, I, I think, I, I don't know, look, they might just end up with 59, mm -hmm. um, especially after the specials. Yep. Um, whether the Greens can steal one of them in the specials, um, we'll have to wait and see. But And that makes it a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like, you know, Dunn and Banks, who are both pretty much national and drag these days, yes. um, yep. will we'll keep them happy. Yes. New so, Zealand, what about New Zealand First? Um, it's been a surprise for all of us, really, that they've gone, done so well. Well, 6.8, jeesh. Yeah, no, I don't think anybody... Well, not very few people <laughs> were picking that. There was a few we just had a, had a bit of a hands up around, and um, I've certainly uh, got a, a colleague who owes me a lunch because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I backed him to get back. Um, but, but no, I don't think many people would have thought he'd get... Um, he'd start with a 6, let alone a, you know, rather yeah, yeah. than a 5. I think that's, that's uh, amazing, but... You know, the reason why I, I bet a lunch on it was simply because I just think there's always a market for that kind of political voice in New Zealand, you know, right. the, it's, which is basically just, you know, one bugger wanting to keep the other buggers under the thumb a little bit, you know? Yeah, and yeah. It's just a, it's a little bit of a, for people who just feel a bit pissed off with the world vote, you yeah. know? Yeah. But, but that 6% has um, come from nowhere, so uh, what voters um, have been lost from other parties, do you think? Where have the, the votes leaked from? Well, it, it, looked, it looked during the week as if it was coming off, off national, and it might have a little bit, but it, it looks more tonight as if it's come more off Labour. Mm. And maybe even um, the Greens. And, and, and maybe the Greens. It's, it's hard to figure out, because the Greens have come down, um, but it certainly hasn't gone to Labour, so... Mm. Yeah, that's just weird if it's come off the Greens. Yeah. I, that doesn't make sense at all, but... Yeah. Um, um, maybe off a little bit off act I, you know they were maybe 1.5 I think some polls are down to, mm. down to about 1 mm. so maybe a little bit there I, oh geez, it's it, that's a hard one to, yeah. well, that, um, that, to figure out but, they, but they, it's, 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 it's partly that vote of people who, who wanted this time to just be a little bit harder for national it's mm. basically I think that's the they're the handbrake party they're the people who are just mm. saying I don't want national to govern alone I don't want them to have it all their own way I want someone in there just making life difficult for them to keep them honest. You know, yeah. that's the kind of New Zealand first vote. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we've got the Conservative Party that, I mean, they've blown out to 2.77. You know, that's a base first ever election. Mm -hmm. They're the first party really to come from nowhere. Yeah. New party, uh, I guess since the Christians anyway. And, um, you know, they, they're not going to be in Parliament, but that's, that's a lot of voters, 53,000 yeah, voters. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing what a couple of million can buy you. Hell, hell. <laughs> yes. But this is a, this is a very rich man um, yeah. who is who has um, run pretty much a one man campaign. Yeah. Whether he can actually build a party machine around him yeah. is, is a whole other thing. But look, he's got a platform to work with. Um, That's right. You you look at you look at his policies, and he is your, your classic. Um, if you listen to talk radio, that's mm. basically what he he. <laughs> Um, he espouses it, it's it's basically right wing and conservative stuff. It's it's, it's pretty much family values, mm. pretty bash. Yeah, exactly. But it's it is Muldoon. It's a good good comparison actually. But it's because it's it's re repeal the, the the smacking legislation. It's don't sell state assets. It's all quite popular stuff there. He's got a little bit of the New Zealand, you know, Winston Peters about him in, in a way. He's yeah, a populist. Yeah. Yes, quite. You know, he's a conservative populist. Um, and again, there's a market for it. Mm. It's just whether he's the man to actually sell it. Right. 
And so, overall, we're we're looking at the uh, referendum results coming up as well. And uh, once again, 56% keeping MMP, 44% wanting to change, which, uh, as we said earlier, that seems pretty much set in stone. You'd think. I think that'd be a huge surprise if that changed. Yeah. Um, obviously, quite a quite a large early vote this time, and mm. uh, and yeah, comfortably in, in favour of MMP. Sure. I, and, I, and I think it's reflected. I think, as I said earlier, it's. There was no energy for change, and no. I think that's reflected in the overall result, yep. where you're going to see probably a very similar shaped government to what we've had the last three years. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, I mean, Act will be smaller, but they'll still be. It'll still yeah. be pretty much the same three coalition partners for national. Yeah. Um, they'll still be able to bounce off yeah. um, one or the other as they have for the last three years. Yeah. The the wisdom of the crowd has been. <laughs> Steady as she goes. That's, well, that would appear to be it. Now, are you as Q and A up tomorrow morning? God, Lord, it is, and I have to go and start making a program now. Right. So Tim Watkin and his <laughs> Tim Watkin and his other life is also a producer on Q and A, uh, TVNZ's flagship current events political show. What are you doing tomorrow? So, you, you got something well, to talk mate, about? We, we've 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 got everybody. I've got to, I've got to figure out how to fit that into an hour of television. Right. Um, Stephen Joyce will be there. Grant Robertson will be up from Wellington. Yeah. Um, we have uh, obviously a good son of Otago University there. Yes. Um, we will have uh, Materia Ture. We will have Tariana Turia. We will have Don Brash, mm. and we. Um, I'll let you know. Some I can. <laughs> sometime between uh, the next ten hours or so, I'll know whether we'll have Winston Peters or not. Oh well, best of luck to you. And if you need any good production people, we've got quite a few down here that yeah, you can always pinch. Um, <laughs> keep Excellent. us going. Always good to know. Yeah, great. Well, have you been having fun down there? Oh, it's been. It's certainly been mm. interesting. It gives me a whole new appreciation for how you guys do things. Oh, geez. It's, I tell you what, the logistics of these things are, are, are never as easy as, as they look. No, no. Tell you what, have you been looking at the electorates, though, too? Interesting yeah. stuff mm. in some of those electorates, eh? Yeah, well, we, we've been commenting down here to the south, which, you know, we're parochial, we're local. And to the south has uh, given its party vote to national. You know, 13,200 13, national party vote, 11,500 Labour. And Has that ever happened before? Uh, well, it certainly hasn't happened under MMP, and right. Labour's returned a, 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 of course, Claire Curran still has got back in as a Labour MP on the electorate vote, but, you know, it's been Labour since the 1930s, so, you know, it goes to show that there, the, the tide has gone National's way right across the country. But the electorate it has, but, but it's interesting, Labour seems to have done better in the electorate, it's hold it, it looks like it's holding on to Rimataka and holding on to, to Palmerston North and yep. holding on to... It's lost Waimakariri though. Yeah, Waimakariri is still close, too close to call, are you saying, or...? Um, yeah, I'm talking to um, the Labour guys, they seem confident that, that Clayton will, will hold on to it right. in the end. Right. They think um, specials will probably be... Um, Labour friendly because of that point that a lot of people have left yes. Waimakariri um, they're likely to be um, uh, <laughs> Labour leaning earthquake refugees well, annoyed, so, annoyed with Surah in the government you think? Sorry say again? Annoyed with Surah in the government Yeah well yeah. if that's the move yeah. um, by default they're going to be you know less happy with the world I, I, yeah. I assume and so probably more likely to be um, um, to, to be Labour voting so I sure. think they think they'll hang on to mm. that What's um, Waitakere? Uh, Bennett looks like she's losing. Oh. She is still? Um, she... Uh, well, take one quick look at this and then we're going to have to wrap it up, I'm afraid, Tim. Oh, no, Sorry, she's mate. serious I'm, back I'm ahead. Away, but that's, no. yeah, that's the other interesting one yeah. I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bennett's okay. back ahead. Well, look, you go do your programme and uh, we'll watch with interest tomorrow morning. Good on you. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Tim. Bye. Thank you. See you, Andrew. OK. Interesting. Interesting. Right. Okay, we've got another guest in the studio. We do. Well, we're coming down to the uh, last half hour of our coverage, so now we're getting to the, the good stuff. <laughs> uh, we're joined by uh, Anna Chin, who's a uh, blogger on the ODT website, a finalist in the Canon Media Awards, I believe, this year for your, your blogging activities. Ago now. Well, a long time ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, once you're a finalist, you're always a finalist. Yes. And who are you supporting here? Who's the badge? Who's yes. The, uh, uh, Tell us about the badge. This is actually uh, Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark because I, I just looked at the two main party leaders, John Key and Phil Goff, and just thought, oh, they're just still the same. I might as well vote for the Crown Prince of Denmark, and I've just got a badge oh. made. Uh, was he an option on your voting paper today? Uh, he wasn't. No, did you, I'm did you write him in? <laughs> I should have done, but the, you know those pens, they're quite big. And <laughs> they can't really read if you write words. You just have to tick and go. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So your thoughts, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I have to... I'm sort of hiding and I'm in denial and not looking too much at National's great big 
majority that they have there. And I'm looking at all these little minor parties and what's happened there, mm -hmm. because there's some consolation to be had there. I, mm -hmm. I am pleased to see that the Greens have probably cracked 10%, and mm -hmm. with the special votes, they will almost certainly mm -hmm. get further. They might even crack 11, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, it's not New Zealand politics without Winston Peters, is it? It's, so it's fun that he's back, I suppose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fun, is that the right word? It's amusing. He's got such a happy smile. <laughs> He's such a nice man. Um, it's, like, it's like putting a fish back in water. Yes. You know, it's, Speaking yeah. as a political scientist, he keeps us in work. <laughs> um, have, having colourful figures and minor parties there gives us more to comment on. And um, so for that yeah. reason alone, it's good to have them back. Very, very yes. good. Um, but National has slipped in, in the sense of um, their opinion polls had them above 50%, so 48% at this stage of the count. Um, it looks like they'll have a... Um, they're sitting on 60 seats there, aren't they? That's right. Yeah. So, you know, they'll just cuddle up probably with the Māori Party. I would think not much has changed. Like, the Māori Party will go and do their 40 hui and they will speak to the mm. iwi, but the iwi will probably do what they did last time and tell them to go with National. And where the offer is. Peter yeah. Sharples was saying earlier that, that, you know, when it comes to asset sales, um, mm. the party does not support asset sales, but if the sa asset sales are going to be made, they mm. will look to um, encourage iwi to buy the assets, mm. and so that will actually be, that will go in favour of mm. iwi, and so, mm. so that's probably, I imagine that's what the coalition will be with John Banks, and you know whether Peter Dunn goes in or not. Dunn will go in. He's an yep. odd little man. No, yes. um, and I'm quite delighted, really, that Epsom um, is just one, that, that ACT has got just, just John Banks, because Don Brash is so abhorrent, and, um, <laughs> and also it made that whole cup of tea thing a nonsense and just a silly, you know, because if National could have got one more MP in, if Goldsmith had won, oh, there's Don Brash now. <laughs> Terrible, he's like a death's head. Um, <laughs> and, so National could have got one more MP in, or, or they could have got John Banks in, and, and I, you know, like it's not, it's not him or there, it's not like actors got that extra 2% yeah. and mm. have carried an extra, mm. an extra block on the right. Yeah. Well, National. you have to suspect that the uncertainty over whether Epsom would be one or not turned a lot of people off, and then also, you know, it's face it, Act's not had a good run of late. And the whole mm. thing has gone in favour, vastly in favour of New Zealand First, I suspect. Well, because it's, yeah, who, who, absolutely. while they were having a cup of tea, who was holding the teaspoon, doing the stirring yeah, in the, the stirring, background? Yeah. That's Very nice Winston. way of putting it. <laughs> now, <laughs> what about Dunedin? Because we were talking before about the fact that National seems to have done very well in the party vote um, in both North and South. What is this idea that the working poor have that uh, John Key's personal wealth is somehow contagious and that they can catch it just by, by voting for him? And, you know, he's so far removed from the reality of South Dunedin. I don't really understand why people there vote So you, you, you take the vote for National as a vote for John Key? You see it that personalised? Yeah, the party vote for National is a party vote for John mm -hmm. Affable Key, isn't mm -hmm. it? Surely. No? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And certainly that's how they campaigned. Mm -hmm. um, it was all about um, putting uh, their, their best asset forward, yeah. which isn't surprising. Mm -hmm. And it was a safe campaign. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, we're basically... They, they were running that uh, competition almost to try to find another national party person in the media. It, mm -hmm. it really was that, you know, it, John Key is the campaign, the campaign is John Key, which, you know, when it's worked for them. I mean, mm. you can't argue with what works. You might not like the way it's done, you might not like the tactics, you might think the tactics aren't good for New Zealand as a whole, but when they work, who's not going to do it? Mm. Absolutely. Okay, the other minor parties, um, have been interesting tonight. Conservatives, where do they come from? I mean, yeah, they come from the field. Well, no, they come right from right field. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How odd. Um, yes. Almost three percent. Describing that as a as a Muldooni sort of a party early, but Muldoon is you know he was a bit of a socialist. I think that. Well, they are against asset sales. Yeah, they have some sort of economic conservatism oh, yeah, about yeah. them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's an interesting result. Um, but what, they're not going to actually have any seats, are they? No, 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 no probably. But no. if they stick around to the next election, they may gain some ground. Mm. Yeah, odd, mm. odd little anomaly. I'm going yeah. to put that down to an anomaly. Mm. Well, it is. It's, it was certainly something I don't think anyone picked up, none of the polls picked up that no. could possibly happen, so, yeah. Mm.